Yes, I'm stranded in Bali, Indonesia, which is a small island between Singapore and Australia. Now, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing with the coronavirus and what's going on? My name is Brett Aramella, and on my channel, I teach drone videography and photography and showing people how to take better aerial images. However, because the coronavirus has affected so many people and right now I'm outside of my country and trying to go back to the United States, but sort of stranded right here, I thought it'd be interesting to share my story. Now this travel story is gonna be part one of a several part series until I get back to the US. Now I have tons of drone videos, really exciting videos that I've shot here in Bali that I'll be sharing over the next few weeks. However, this video is gonna be different. So first I'm gonna give you a history and some context in how I got into this situation and we're gonna talk about whether it's a good situation or not because right now it seems to be pretty good. It seems to be all right. Although things are starting to change here, kind of like they've changed around the world. So I'm gonna fill you in on all that in today's video. All right, so let's backtrack to last year. I plan on coming to Southeast Asia. In particular, I wanted to go to the Philippines because I saw how beautiful the landscape was. I'm working on a big drone project and I thought that would be a great place to shoot. In addition, they spoke English. It was relatively easy to get around the different islands and the Philippines has pretty lenient drone laws so I wouldn't have too much difficulty in terms of flying my drones in the places I wanted to fly. Now there are other places around the world that I want to fly my drone. Unfortunately, the laws and restrictions are so strict that it makes it kind of difficult. So I thought the Philippines would be a great place. Unfortunately, just after New Year's, a volcano inside of a lake inside of a mountain inside of an island erupted. So this volcano went up and debris went into the air about nine miles. And all this debris went around and it was close to the airport, which is Manila, which is kind of like the main hub to all the different locations in the Philippines. So you basically have to fly through Manila to get to these other locations. So because many flights have been canceled after this volcano eruption near Manila, I decided to change my plans because I didn't want to risk the health risk of getting that debris in my lungs. So geographically, Indonesia is similar to the Philippines. Now culturally, it's much different. They also don't speak English. Some people speak English, but a lot of people don't speak English very well, so it's difficult to communicate. However, I thought it was a good alternative to the Philippines. So I decided to change my plane ticket to Bali, and that's where I am right now. I've been in Bali for about a month, I've been shooting a lot of great footage. However, recently things have started to change. Now the coronavirus hasn't really hit Indonesia right away quite like other countries around the world. And in Bali, there's just one case of a British woman who died from the coronavirus, but people seem to be going around and very few people have masks. However, in the last couple days, I noticed more and more people are wearing masks. Some shops and things are shutting down. It's starting to change much like the rest of the world so that's why I decided it might be a good idea if I go back to the United States now part of me is thinking maybe I should stay here because it's better here there's farms and land over here there's plenty of food but at the same time how long will I be stranded here if I can't get a flight back to the United States now the Bali Airport is shut down to March 31st so to the end of the month I can't leave anyway but my visa is up. So today I went down to the immigration to extend my visa. Now things are a bit crazy with immigration right now in Indonesia. I think this is the way it normally is, although because of the coronavirus, things have gotten a little more extreme. I wanted to go to the US Embassy or US Consulate first. So I went downtown to the US Consulate and it was this little room in kind of an alleyway. It looked kind of strange, but I went inside and there's a picture of Trump and Pence up on the wall and there's three workers inside this room. And I told them my situation and basically they told me they couldn't find me a flight. They couldn't really help me. So I asked them, what's the point of having a US consulate or US embassy? Like what is their job in terms of helping uh, American citizens? And they said it's to give information and updates about the coronavirus. To me, that didn't really make too much sense because I can get that on the US website, which they gave to me. They're like, you can go to the CDC and the World Health Organization to look up this information. I'm like, why did I come here if I can just look up that information on the internet? Can you help me find a ticket or something like this? I don't know if that's their job or not. But at the same time, I got myself in the situation. So 
you know, I have to take responsibility for that. So the next stop was to immigration and the US consulate said that the immigration would be the ones who could help me find a flight or could help me extend my visa. Obviously they extend the visa by helping me with my flight was something I didn't think that immigration really did. To me, it didn't make much sense that the Indonesian government should be responsible for finding a flight for me. Instead, I thought it was the US consulate. I thought that was their job. Anyhow, I went down to immigration and the first thing I noticed was all the people surrounded in this small room. And I thought to myself, this shouldn't be happening. And a lot of people didn't have masks on, didn't have gloves on. And it just made me think this is not a good situation considering the coronavirus is spreading so fast. So I went down there, I put on gloves, I had a mask on. I just went inside to get a ticket number to go for a photo and an interview. Now this was the third time I had gone down to immigration. The first time I went and they said I was too late. I went at one o'clock and on the website it said open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They said if you come after 12 noon, it's too late. They don't accept applications. So I have to come back the next day. So I filled out the application, went back the next day and then they told me, oh, you wrote in blue ink, you need to write in black ink. So I had to fill out the application again in black ink I gave it to them. Then they kept my passport and they told me I have to come back in four days. So that was yesterday. So I went down there yesterday, got my ticket for my number to be called, but rather than wait inside, I waited outside because I didn't want to be around all those people. So I waited far away and I actually met this German couple. They seemed to be very prepared. They had the mask on, they had gloves and they taped their wrists. You know, if you're taping your wrists, you're really serious. So other people, were not quite as protective. Couples were holding hands like they were just walking out onto the beach, like it's no big deal. I saw little children without any masks, coloring and drawing. I saw a woman inside filling out an application with her little child in her arm. And right next to them, there was a man who was playing a guitar. So it was pretty crazy. It was not what I expected considering everything that's been on the news and this has been, sort of been the feeling in Bali. A lot of people seem to act as if it's not that big of a deal, but things have been shutting down. I know that because a few days ago, I went to this rice terrace that was in the middle of nowhere, and it was really far, far away from most tourist spots, and very few tourists go there because it's so far, and they shut down that rice terrace. So I thought, man, this is odd that this rice terrace in the middle of nowhere in the mountains is shut down. And then I started seeing various restaurants and shops around town being closed down as well and workers wearing masks. So things have definitely changed a lot just in the last couple days in Bali. Now also in Bali, because it's a Hindu island, like 85 to 90% of the people on the island practice the Hindu religion, it's kind of like their Christmas day today. However, all of that's canceled. There's supposed to be all these festivities and people getting together, but all that has been canceled. Now I've noticed a lot of people have gathered together. I was on the beach with some holy people and some mediators who were having a religious gathering. Everyone seems to be not social distancing. They seem to be getting together all over the island. You'll see this people getting up early, going to the market and hundreds of people together are going to these religious events and all these people together. So social distancing and staying apart and wearing masks hasn't been a common thing so far on the island of Bali. So after waiting for over two hours, my ticket number finally got called. I went inside, they fingerprinted me so I had to take off my gloves and get fingerprinted. They did have some hand sanitizer so I used that, plus I had my own. They took my photo and told me to come back on March 31st. It was then that I could extend my visa. Now, they said I could get my visa extended for one month and I asked them about a plane ticket. Well, how do I leave? Now I had bought a ticket to Malaysia and I also had bought a ticket to Australia and both of those countries are shut down as is New Zealand, the Philippines, all these countries around me are shut down. So I was looking at other hubs, maybe Dubai, but a lot of airlines aren't flying there now. So I can't even get a connection to get to the United States and there's no direct flights from Bali to the United States. So I'm basically stuck here, kind of like Gilligan's Island. Took a three hour tour, but <laughs> ended up lasting a lot longer. Or like the Hotel California, you can check in, but you can't leave. So as of right now, they have my passport. I have to go down to immigration on the 31st for the fourth time and get an extension for my visa. I don't know what they're gonna say. Basically, I think they're 
gonna give me a few more weeks and then I'm gonna have to try to figure it out. Part of me is thankful that I'm here and not in certain parts of the United States because the virus has been spreading so much. And right here, I guess because I'm so isolated on this tiny island that it hasn't really spread and there's farms and food all around. So I think in a crisis situation, I would still be able to get food. Now, my other thought was if I fly back now, I'm probably more at risk of picking up the coronavirus in an airport or on a plane. And is it worth doing that or should I just stay put here in Bali? What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. I'm trying to figure this all out. I know you guys are trying to figure out your situation too. So I hope you and your family, your friends are all healthy and doing well and you're managing with whatever situation you're going through right now. So that's it. That's my personal coronavirus travel story. I'm Brett Caramella, the Drone Pilot Pro. And remember, siempre pa'lante, nunca pa' atrás.